Okay, let's write an application that asks the user for some input and we'll do something with the user input. So let's start out by writing. Uh, so we'll print out what is the price of the item. And we'll ask the user for the price of an item. And then we'll print out. Uh, Uh, the price after 20% or 30% off is, and we'll print out the price, the new price of the item. So we need to calculate that price, and before we do that, we need to get um, the original price. So let me get rid of this first for now. Um, oops, what did I do? <laughs> There. So how the question is, how do I get data from the user? And the way we do that is with a scanner. I'm going to say scanner keyboard is new scanner system in. And you see, I'm still getting these little red lines. If I go there, Eclipse tells me the scanner cannot be resolved. Uh, there's seven fixes available. The first one is import scanner. That is what I want. So I'm going to click on that. And when I do that, you see what Eclipse did is added this statement here. It says import Java util dot scanner. So the scanner is another part of the language. The way Java works is it doesn't load all the things, all the parts of the language every time. So there's some parts of it, the language that get loaded, but other parts only only get loaded if you actually explicitly import them, like the scanner. So we're importing the scanner, and now we can use scanner as a new data type. So what is a scanner? Well, we have declared right here in this line, we declared the keyboard variable is now of type scanner. And uh, if we say keyboard, dot wait a second and eclipse will pop up all the methods that keyboard or a scanner implements um, the one we're looking for is going to be next uh, you see there's all these next me next methods so I can use those uh, I'm probably gonna want next double Right. So next double scans the next token of the input as a double. This method will throw, etc. If the token cannot be translated to a valid double value. Uh, and uh, that's the one that we want. It's going to return a double. Um, so we're going to say double price is that. And uh, uh, before we do this, I'm going to comment that out for a second. Um, and uh, I'm going to instead print out the price so that we can see that. So what it's going to do is going to print what is the price of the item. Then we create a keyboard. Uh, we say keyboard dot next double. And that goes into price, and then we print out the price. Let's run that, see what happens. So it says, what is the price of the item? If I now click over on the console here, and I enter a number, I say 77, I hit enter, it prints 77.0, right? So that's what happens. I entered 77 as the user. The program got that double, put that into the price variable, and printed it out. So I could uh, make it more obvious. I could say you typed in plus and run that. Um, always save it. OK. What is the price of the item? Um, and it works. OK, so that's how I get data from the user. Well, I create, I use the scanner which is in the keyboard variable. And 
I can use that keyboard variable to every time I say keyboard.next double, it's going to return the next value that the user types in as long as it's a double. If it's not a double, we're going to be in trouble. Uh, for example, let me run that again and say I'm the user and I type in, you know, uh, no, enter, and I'm going to get that exception. The program crashes. Uh, we'll talk about later how to, you know, get around that problem. Um, but for now, what I want, really wanted to do is, uh, assuming, let's assume for now that the user does type in a number, uh, and uh, I want not to print the original number, but the number minus 20% off, right? So I can go back to the program. So I know that by this point in my program, the var variable price has the price that the user typed in, and I know that that's a double. So I know that the new price is going to have to be the price times 0.8. Right? Because 20% off is the same as 80% of the original price. Right? Right, just a little bit of math there. Um, so, oops, I wanted 30%. Okay, so 30% off is the same as 70% of the original price. Thus, I want to multiply by 0.7. Oops. 0.7. Uh, probably should put 0 0.7 to make it more obvious. And I can say the price after 30% off is the new price. Let's try that. I'm going to run that. Let's start with an easy one. 100. The new price after 30% off is 70. Okay, that works. We can then try other ones. How about 12.78? Uh, New price is 8.946. I think that's right. Uh, I can check it with a calculator. Um, so that is how we get input from the user. Notice that we can use this again. So I can um, I can grab that. I'm gonna do that. And I can grab this part here, enter, and I can change the message. Oops. Of is I can change. Don't keep going up. <laughs> uh, Enter another price. I can enter another price, and then I can again calculate the new price is the price times 0.7. And once again, I can just move that over there and run it again. So I can enter my first price, which is 10. And I can enter a second prize, which is say 20, and it tells me the right answer every time. 